So one of my favorite pieces of smart tech I've purchased in the last 12 months has been the Elgato Stream Deck. I use it for all sorts of things, controlling meetings, controlling audio for when I'm playing music, and as I showed you in a video a few months ago, how to control your smart home using the Stream Deck. Now you might be wondering, why are we talking about the Stream Deck again? Didn't you already do a video on this? Well, wouldn't you know it, the week that I released that video, I got a flurry of comments from people asking why I wasn't using the dedicated project of a Stream Deck Home Assistant plugin. Now I hadn't found this plugin and hadn't actually known it existed until those people commented, including the author of the plugin. So I decided to revisit the project and see how it compares to the Bar Raider API Ninja plugin. Is this a better option for your smart home? Let's take a look. Hey everyone, it's Ryan with The Smart House. And first I wanna apologize for being gone for the last few weeks. If you hadn't seen my community post, I got a new job opportunity and I've been spending the last few weeks closing down the old job before I started up the new one. I think it's gonna be a great opportunity and actually start it next week. So last year, I created a video showing you how to control your Home Assistant instance using a Stream Deck. Now this used a plugin called the Bar Raider API plugin for your Stream Deck and controlled your smart home using the Nabucasa webhooks. That is a simpler option for most users because it doesn't require port forwarding. However, not all users use Nabucasa and some more power users want to be able to directly control the API. So in this week's video, I'm going to show you a dedicated plugin that allows you to communicate directly with your Home Assistant API through your firewall and control your smart home. So my previous video had the requirement of the Nabucasa Cloud. Now not all users use this because it is a paid subscription, but the advantage of this method is you don't require any port forwarding on your network. So in this method, all traffic passes through the Nabucasa Cloud, which acts as a bridge between your Stream Deck and your Home Assistant instance. Now this is the advantage of not requiring port forwarding like I said before, but it is limited to only being able to trigger automations because you can only trigger automations with a webhook. You can't trigger anything else like lights or switches. So you'd have to build an entire automation package for everything you want to control from the Stream Deck. So the plugin that we're going to use today is aptly named Home Assistant Stream Deck Plugin, and it allows you to communicate directly with the API on your Home Assistant instance. So if you want to do this remotely, say you're in an office somewhere and you want to control your Home Assistant instance back at home, you will require port forwarding of the 8123 port through your firewall. Now, if you're gonna be doing this locally, so like for example here, where I'm in my house and I can control my Home Assistant instance that's here in my home, then you don't need to do any port forwarding. That's not a requirement. So I'm not gonna go into any details on how to set up port forwarding today because that varies so wildly for every different router and ISP. But the simplest way to find out how to set up port forwarding is just to Google either your ISP or the manufacturer of your router and port forwarding setup. All right, so let's jump in, get the plugin set up, and I'll show you some examples of how you can use this plugin to control your smartphone. All right, so the requirements for this project are fairly simple. All you need is a Stream Deck or the Stream Deck mobile app, a Home Assistant instance configured, and if you're using this outside your home, port forwarding. Now, one thing to note is make sure you're running the latest version of the Stream Deck software because they only introduced the store where we're gonna be installing the plugin a few versions ago. So make sure if you don't have the store to update to the latest version. All right, so let's get started by installing the plugin. So here we are on my Stream Deck. Let's go ahead and click on the store, go down to plugins, and then we'll click up here and search for Home Assistant. Once you find the plugin, go ahead and click install and click install. It should take just a minute. Once it's installed, close out of the store and we'll hop back into our Stream Deck. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new profile here. So as always with your Stream Deck plugins, they're all added here on the right and there's actually a Home Assistant plugin right here that is available for you to drag and drop in. So we'll drag and drop the entity in. Unfortunately, you can't make this any bigger, so I'll have to just zoom in down here. Now it has already loaded in the information for my Home Assistant instance because I had this plugin already set up, but real quickly, I'll show you how this URL breaks down. Now, if you're like me and you have your Home Assistant instance set up through something like DuckDNS or using an Nginx proxy, then you want to just use the URL that you typically go to to manage your Home Assistant instance. So in my case, I go to mydomain.duckdns.org and I'd go right in to my Home Assistant instance, no ports required. If you have your setup with a direct IP address integration or you're doing this internally, you'll want to use the IP address colon 8123 to be able to communicate with your Home Assistant instance. So in my case, I'm just using the DuckDNS name. So in my case, I don't have to specify a port. 
I just have to specify the DNS name. Make sure you change out the HTTPS or HTTP for WS WebSockets. This will tell it to address it on the WebSocket ports instead of trying to access it over HTTP. So again, in my case, it's WS colon forward slash forward slash name of your duck DNS dot duck DNS dot org. And then it already specifies the rest of the URL right here for your API. So slash API slash WebSocket. So again, if this was an internal where you were trying to access a home assistant on an internal device, it would be WS colon slash slash 192.168.1.5 colon 8123. So this will function for me because that is the IP address of my internal home assistant. And then down here, it's asking for an access token. Now to get your access token, go ahead and pop into your home assistant instance, which in this case would be my test instance. All right, so we'll go ahead and go down to the bottom left-hand corner where is the name of your profile. Click that. It'll bring up the profile, which is where you can customize your UI, theme, etc. Scroll down here to the bottom and we'll see long-lived access tokens. So in this case, we'll go ahead and create a new one. Call this one Stream Deck. Click OK. And then take this long code and paste it in the box. Once you do that, you'll see a green check mark if you've got the formatting all correct. And then you would hit Save and Reconnect. If everything looks good, then you will get these new options down here for domain, entity, etc. So that if you see that, that means you've got it configured correctly. Now, the good news is you do not have to repeat this process for each button you add. It'll go ahead and save it as part of the plugin. So if you drag and drop a new button, you don't have to worry about putting this information back in again. But it is always a good idea to hold on to your long live access token someplace like Notion or Evernote. That way you have to set everything back up from scratch. You don't have to delete and re-add the long-lived access token. All right, so now that we've got the plugin configured, let's go ahead and see how it works. So now that we've got a plugin, for a, we'll, we'll do a basic example to start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an automation. So you select which type of domain it is. And again, you have access to everything your Home Assistant API can touch, which is pretty neat. So we'll do an automation. And then you can click here and it will load the list of all of your entity IDs. So, so you don't even need to worry about finding the entity ID. It'll actually load them all directly out of the Home Assistant API, which is pretty nice. Go ahead and use the same automation we did on the last Stream Deck video. This is my fan that's here in the office with me. And I, if you watch the last video, I have an automation that will determine what speed the fan is going at. And every time you trigger the automation, it'll speed the fan up by one speed. So it'll go low, medium, high, off. Now that automation is, I've already got a blog post about that one from the last video, but I'm gonna link right here at the bottom that will show you how to set that up in a automation you can copy and paste. All right, so we've got that added. Now for service, we wanna go ahead and do trigger. So if this was a light, we could choose turn on or turn off. Or if you wanted to disable an automation by pressing a button, you can use the turn off. We're going to use the trigger here. And since we're not going to pass it any JSON data, you can leave that one completely empty. Now, one of the cool features about this is you can actually set a service to long press. So for example, if this was a light, you could have it a single press would turn the light on, but if you hold the button down, it would turn it off. So the limitation here is it has to be the same entity ID. So this isn't something that you can have it turn one light on if you press versus another light on if you held down the button. But it's super nice for things like lights or switches that you can activate and then also long press. Now, if you want to have a toggle, we'll talk about that here in a second where you have the same button press that toggles between two different functions. So at the bottom here, um, we don't really, you could actually set a custom button title right here if you wanted to, and that's just going to load a entity ID out of the home, home assistant. So this is gonna call it the friendly name, which in my case is gonna to be too long, but I'll go ahead and leave it in there so you can see what it looks like. And then you can also change the custom labels if you want to as well. So I'll set save entity config. And if you look right here, you've got change office fan, cause it's a big long title and on. So that's all good to go. Now let's go ahead and press the button and my fan just turned on. So there we go, that works out well. It's a very simple example. And of course, if you wanna set an icon, you can set a custom icon. I do have a recommendation. If you're looking for free icons for setting up Home Assistant, uh, I use a website called icon8.com. It has a paid subscription tier, but since we're not talking about super high resolution, there's a lot of free icons that you can grab and customize. So that's a great resource if you wanna customize your icons or create kind of a, a matched look. You can load in iOS or Android material icons uh, directly from the website, so it's pretty nice. All right, so there's our simple example for a fan. 
So to do a quick example of something where you hold the button down to change the state, let's go ahead and head back down here again. We've dragged a new button in, same, everything's the same at the top. We're gonna select switch and we're gonna select the office wax warmer, which is this light right behind me. Select that. So on a single press, we wanna turn it on. And then if I scroll down here, for the long press, I want it to turn off. In this case, I wanna press it one time. Nothing happens because it's already on. If I press and hold it, it turns off. And you notice the logo changes to an off switch here, which is the visual service indicator. So it's actually reading from Home Assistant whether or not that is on and then changing the updated switch here on the screen. That works well for things like lights or switches that you wanna be able to pull the status from automatically. So in this case, I probably wanna go ahead and say custom button title, the friendly name. And again, there's that office wax warmer. Um, I could obviously change this to wax warmer or whatever I wanted it to do. So now I have the capability of really quickly being able to turn on a device or press and hold to turn it off. All right, so for this last example, so I have a button on my Stream Deck. I have mentioned it before where I press a single button and it runs a set of commands. Before this was a single automation that ran. Now I can individually address each component as it turns on so I get a better status update. Now say I wanted to have two automations, one to run the first time I press it and one to run it the second time I press it to be able to say, turn on everything and then be able to shut it all down when I'm done. Now to do that, all we need to do is head over to the Stream Deck menu and grab a multi-action switch. Drop that into place and you'll see you have a one and a two. This allows you to set multiple actions under one item and then when you press it again, it runs the second set of actions. Now the only complicated thing here is there's no way for Stream Deck to know if you're currently in the on state or the off state. So this is something where you're gonna wanna run it sequentially. So if you have, say, a series of lights you wanna turn on, and then you wanna turn those off later on, if one or two of those lights are on, you're gonna to have to go through that full on, full off type of scenario. So all we would have to do here is drag in a few Home Assistant commands. So I just click on the content button here, and you can copy and paste. So I went ahead and pasted in my start recording sequence here. And then you can of course mix this in with anything else you want. So now what I've got is I've got, so I've got two functions here. Uh, one, the first one that will actually turn on the TV here behind me. So I've selected a media player, the office TV, which is the Chromecast, which is connected to the TV behind me. And then we're gonna use the turn on function. So what I've done is I've created a multi-action switch that will allow me to do just a quick test when the button's pressed the first time, it'll turn on the wax warmer and the TV behind me. When I press it a second time, it'll turn those devices back off again. A couple things to note. One, make sure you always scroll to the bottom and hit save configuration. If you don't do that, then it'll forget it when you leave the window and come back in again. The second thing is you cannot copy and paste these entities right now. I'm not sure if it's a limitation in Stream Deck or with the project itself. If you copy and paste it, it will just create a blank entity where you have to fill everything out. And then if you wanna set custom icons, you can go down here and say set from file and be able to set whatever icons you want for the on position or the off position. It'll automatically add a grayed version of the, of the on position if you want to. So we'll go ahead and press that button. And there goes that, and the TV just turned on. Now if I press it again, so I pressed it again, and that shut the TV off. So there you go, now you have a much more powerful Stream Deck controller than you did before. I feel like this is much more robust than the Bar Raider API function in Nabucasa. If you have a Stream Deck and use Home Assistant, there's no reason why you shouldn't go ahead and get this set up. This is a super powerful way to not only control your lights and devices in your house, but also use Home Assistant to kick off other commands elsewhere. So you can store all your API commands on Home Assistant and kick them off using your Stream Deck. So, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. You may have noticed I printed out a new stand for my Stream Deck. I've got the STL file for this in the description below. I am considering starting a new blog series of just what I'm currently printing, fun things that I've been 3D printing over the last few months, and new things I'm printing each week. So I'll be adding that to my website, which is linked here at the bottom, if you're interested in that. So if you're interested in other Home Assistant projects, please click on the link here above. If you'd like to let the algorithms choose for you, you can click down here. And as always, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the logo right here. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.